Imagine a world with no pain, no hunger, no danger. A world where every need is met. Food, shelter, safety, endless comfort. Now imagine that world collapsing, not because of famine or war, but because its citizens simply stopped caring. They stopped breeding, they stopped nurturing, they stopped living. This is the Mouse Utopia Experiment, a real study that ran from 1962 to 1973 and ended in total self-destruction. And the message it left behind, when life becomes too easy, purpose dies first. In the early 1960s, Dr. John Calhoun, a behavioral researcher, wanted to understand what would happen to a population if every form of struggle was removed. So he built what he called a mouse utopia. It was a large enclosed space, safe, temperature controlled, disease free. The mice had unlimited food and water, soft nesting material and perfect hygiene, no predators, no danger, no scarcity. Everything the mice could possibly need was provided. He called the experiment Universe 25 and it was meant to be a heaven. And at first it was. The first eight mice were introduced, four males and four females. They explored, they nested and they thrived. With endless resources, the population doubled every two months or so. And by the day 315, there were over 600 mice. Every indicator of success was off the charts. Healthy babies, a stable social groups, plenty of food. Calhoun called this the explosive phase. It was paradise, but paradise did not last. As the population kept rising, the space became crowded, but not physically. There was still plenty of room, but socially. Too many mice, too many faces, too little meaning. That's when things began to unravel. The first cracks showed in the mothers. As the population kept rising, the space became crowded, not physically, but socially. Calhoun called this state the behavioral sink, a point where the overwhelming number of interactions uh, caused chronic social stress. The mice were constantly exposed to strangers and forced to interact, leading to extreme psychological overload. This stress fractured their natural instincts. Even though food and shelter were everywhere, some mothers began abandoning or attacking their own babies. Others stopped building nests or completely forgot how to rear their young. The males began to lose structure too. Dominant males started fighting endlessly, beating, wounding and killing without reason. A redirection of their stress and inability to establish meaningful territory. Weaker males withdrew completely, hiding in corners, grooming themselves obsessively and refusing to mate. Calhoun called this withdrawn passive males the beautiful ones. They didn't fight, they didn't breed, they just sat alone, eating, cleaning themselves and staring into nothing. Physically perfect, but mentally gone. The stress of the crowded society had caused them to disengage from all the purposeful social roles. By the day 1000, the utopia was silent. The population peaked at just over 2000 mice, then started to crash. The essential social knowledge, how to mate, how to nest, how to defend was lost. The beautiful ones and the neglectful mothers meant the birth rate plummeted to zero. No new birds, no fights, no emotion. Even though food and water were still unlimited, the society has lost the will to survive because the intense social density has shredded the meaning of the social roles. Death took over, not physical death from famine, but behavioral death caused by relentless stress and a total loss of community function. And the final mouse died on day 2500, a perfect world completely extinct. Calhoun's conclusion was brutal. Civilizations don't die from hunger, they die from meaningless. When struggle disappears, so does the reason to cooperate, compete or to create. Every animal, including humans, need purpose, something to strive for. When everything is given, the drive to build families, uh, to build communities and progress evaporates. The mice didn't need each other anymore. They didn't need to fight for survival or for status. And once their social roles become meaningless, their identities did too. And that's when their society rotted from the inside out. Now here is where it really gets uncomfortable because this is not really about the mice, it's about us. We live in our own version of the Universe 25. We have abundance, comfort, safety, endless stimulation. We've eliminated much of the struggle that used to define life but we've also eliminated much of its meaning. We're seeing the same symptoms Calhoun saw in mice. Falling birth rates, not because of famine, but because people simply don't want to raise families. 
isolation, social withdrawal, uh, digital addiction, and a generation of the beautiful one endlessly scrolling, eating, and polishing the perfect image of themselves online. Loss of empathy. Just like the mice stopped defending each other, modern humans are becoming spectators, watching suffering through screens, feeling nothing. We've traded survival for convenience, and in doing so, we've lost connection, purpose, and even love. Calhoun believed that healthy societies need challenge, not endless pain, but purposeful difficulty. He said, when all sense of necessity is gone, life ceases to have a purpose and the organism dies. We are built to struggle, to work for something, to protect something, to build something that outlives us. When life becomes too easy, the mind searches for meaning, and if you can't find it, it breaks. That's why people in comfortable societies turn to chaos, drugs, drama, outrage, anything that feels real again. Just like the mice that turn on each other when there was nothing left to fight for. Most people think the opposite of suffering is happiness, but it's not. The opposite of suffering is emptiness. The mouse utopia shows us that a life without struggle is not paradise, it's decay. Because growth, empathy, love, they all require effort. They're built in friction, not in comfort. You can feed a society forever, but if you take away its purpose, it will eat itself. How do we avoid the fate of the Calhoun's mice or the Universe 25? Number one, choose challenge. Comfort is a cage that looks like freedom. Do something hard every day. Lift, build, learn, create. Number two, reconnect. Isolation breeds decay. Spend time with real people in real spaces. Human touch and shared purpose rebuild the social glue. Number three, serve something bigger. You don't need religion to have purpose. You just need to contribute, to help someone, mentor someone, protect something. Responsibility is the antidote to emptiness. Number four, respect the hunger. The longing for purpose is not weakness. It's your survival instinct. It's what separates you from the beautiful ones. Don't silence it. Feed it. The mouse utopia might be a story about rodents, but still applies to us today. Calhoun called it the behavioral sink, a slow drowning of meaning in comfort. We're living it right now with our screen, our safety, our simulated lives. But unlike the mice, we can choose, we can struggle on purpose, and we can make discomfort our teacher instead of our enemy. Because the real utopia is not the absence of pain, it's the presence of purpose. If this story made you rethink about comfort and purpose, please hit subscribe to The Dark Mirror, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.